for people unfamiliar with you, um, please just tell us your name, uh, a little bit about your background, and really what you've been doing for the last 20 years. Actually, for 23 years, I've been traveling around the world, speaking on GMOs, writing books, and making movies, and I run an institute called the Institute for Responsible Technology. My name is Jeffrey Smith, and my latest film is called Secret Ingredients, which I did with Amy Hart. And that's available at secretingredientsmovie.com. What scientific studies have been done on the health impacts of GMOs on our health, and what did the studies show? There's been numerous studies now that show significant impacts on animals that are force-fed GMOs in feeding trials. Uh, potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system, activated immu immune system, multiple massive tumors, premature death, um, significant issues throughout the range of areas that they've tested, including damage to the microbiome. Now, these are not unpredicted because the process of genetic engineering itself causes massive collateral damage within the DNA and can create randomly new toxins, allergens, anti-nutrients, or increased levels of existing toxins, allergens, and anti-nutrients. In addition, GMOs are largely designed to be sprayed with herbicide. Most popularly is Roundup. The Roundup Ready seeds constitute the vast majority of GMOs, more than 80%. Roundup residues end up in the crops, and Roundup is quite dangerous to health. And a lot of research on Roundup also shows significant problems. In fact, Roundup can damage the very foundation of our health. In addition, some crops are called BT crops, corn, cotton, and in South America, some soy. BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, that's soil bacteria. They take a gene from the soil bacteria, insert it into the GMO. It produces a toxin, BT toxin, which kills insects by poking holes in the guts of those insects. Now they found in laboratory studies it can poke holes in human cells. So it might be causing leaky gut or perforated uh, cells in our gut. It also can provoke an immune system response in animals and it's been shown to provoke immune system response in workers that are handling the BT. So if you look at the BT toxin, the Roundup, or the GMO itself, they all show significant signs of problems. I had the honor and pleasure of bringing the documented health risks of genetically engineered foods to the medical community by starting in 2006 presentations to medical conferences. And soon after, many of these practitioners were prescribing non-GMO diets to their patients. And around 2008, I heard from some of those doctors who described how their patients got better from a variety of diseases specifically after they took GMOs out of their diet. And it was predictable. In fact, they were telling me certain di disorders or diseases get better in a certain number of days within a particular range with a level of predictability was uncanny. This was new news to me and to basically everyone because no one knew how sensitive people were to eating GMOs. So I actually started to ask people in my lectures, how many of you noticed an improvement in your health when you switched to a non-GMO and often organic diet? And the hands would go up. So I would say, okay, what changes did you notice? And I asked the same question, and people would say, for example, I have problems with digestion. i said, how many people noticed a problem with digestion? And I'd see the hands. How many people noticed increased or decreased fatigue and decreased brain fog? How many people lost weight? And I was watching these answers, and it was the same basic answers in over 150 lectures, including many lectures to the medical community where I said, on behalf of your patients, what did you notice? So they were representing thousands and thousands of patients and then we surveyed 3,256 people who reported getting better in 28 conditions, the same conditions that people reported in these lectures, in the same relative order. The number one improvement was always digestive problems. Number two was increased uh, energy, reduced fatigue. Three was weight loss, um, including uh, relief from obesity. Then brain fog, then all sorts of things, food sensitivities, pain, anxiety, depression, autism, uh, cancer, hypertension. And if you look at these particular diseases, many of them are on the rise in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and the Roundup herbicides sprayed on them in the United States. So we have the examples of people getting better from these disorders. We have the correlative evidence supporting the link. doesn't cause it, doesn't prove it, but it supports it. 
We have similar reports from veterinarians, pet owners, and farmers when they take pets and livestock and put them on non-GMOs. And when you look at the laboratory animals that are force-fed GMOs or Roundup, they exhibit either these conditions or their precursors. Moreover, if you look at the modes of action of BT toxin, of Roundup, and also the process of genetic engineering itself, you could predict these particular set of diseases. And I'm talking about the major diseases we're facing in society. So when you take a look at the whole body of evidence and the repeating patterns, it's pretty significant. In fact, I don't think we need to wait for more evidence to immediately eliminate GMOs and Roundup from our diets. Now, it used to be that I'd say, eat GMOs and if you can, eat organic then you get all the benefits of organic. Now we understand that Roundup is sprayed on a lot of non-GMOs. It's sprayed on wheat, oats, barley, all the cereals or grains. It's sprayed on lentils and mung beans. It's sprayed on potatoes and sweet potato fields. It's throughout our food supply, except in the organic field. So now I say eat organic, and if you can't eat organic, at least eat non-GMO.